What's up YouTube? In this video, I am going to show you five pieces of gear that I use in my home studio that are under 500 bucks and have helped me be more creative and streamlined in my workflow. First, if you find this or any of my videos to be interesting or valuable to you in any way, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. First up is my very budget-friendly wireless in-ear monitoring system. I wanted to save my hearing because I was starting to really crank up my headphones when I was tracking and I wanted to be able to move freely around the studio, pick up different instruments, keep things going while I experimented with different sounds. But wireless in-ears are really expensive. So I did some research and I came upon these KZ ZS10s, I think. I'll put the link in the description. And honestly, I gotta say, they aren't bad for 50 bucks. They sit in my ear just fine and they have a detachable C-pin cable so you can upgrade your cable if you want. They do a really good job of keeping the outside noise level really low so I can monitor myself at a pretty low volume and that saves my hearing. Now for the wireless transmitter receiver system, I ended up going with this Galaxy Audio AnySpot AS950T. You know, it's 230 bucks. The sound quality is not totally amazing. There's some pretty significant interference issues if you're like moving around a ton. Once you get in one spot, it pretty much goes away. There is no perceivable latency. I can track drums. I can get up after that, grab a tambo or some auxiliary percussion, grab the bass, grab the guitar, and just like move around the studio with the in-ears in and I can track everything I want. Eventually I might upgrade to a higher quality system, but for now I'm liking this setup. Next up are the Lewitt 440 large diaphragm condenser microphones. I've got two of them and I use them as my drum overheads. For a while I was on this never ending search for drum overheads that I liked. Every pencil condenser that I tried sounded way too harsh. I even got these $700 Shure KSM 137s and I just wasn't super impressed with them. So I got the Lewitts and I gotta say they're awesome. There's really no harshness. I barely have to EQ them and they just have a nice full sound where, you know, the top end is is pretty smooth. And for 240 bucks a piece, I got to say I'm really pleased with them. Next up, we've got the DSM Humboldt Simplifier. If you've seen any of my other videos, you've probably seen me talk about this thing a little bit. Um, basically, it's an amp sim. I needed an amp sim because I play guitar at night when my kids are asleep and you know I really wanted something that was just simple just a few amp and cap sims and I could use the guitar pedals I already had to dial in my tone and the simplifier does just that but what I really like about it is the flexibility it has a stereo XLR output so you can do two different mic positions on two different cabs and run those in stereo you can sum to mono it has a through output it's got an FX send with a stereo return plus an auxiliary end and a headphone out jack. The controls are really similar to a typical amp with volume gain and a three band EQ. And it's got three options for each cab and a tube selector. There's no menu diving. There's no spending hours flipping through presets. It just works. How they do all this with an all analog signal path, I have no idea, but for 300 bucks, I don't think I'm gonna find an amp sim that has as much flexibility and as pedal friendly as the simplifier is. Speaking of pedals, next up is the JHS Colorbox V2. So I'm using this pedal in sort of a different way. It's actually not with my guitar at all. I'm using it as an outboard EQ and saturation device. The pedal takes both XLR and unbalanced inputs and it's got an XLR out. So I can use this on virtually any track in my productions. I use it for EQ a lot, and sometimes I use it for subtle, not so subtle saturation. And for 400 bucks, I feel like this adds some really nice color to my tracks. And when I want it for the EQ section alone, it makes a huge difference. Um, my only complaint is that it's not stereo. So if JHS, you guys make this thing in stereo, I will buy that instantly. Lastly, we have the Art Pro VLA2 compressor. So I was looking at external hardware compressors for a long time, and I almost spent 2000 bucks on two distressor units. 
But I started looking at this thing more and more, reading reviews, looking at the YouTube reviews and things like that, and honestly, it's pretty good. I haven't been disappointed with it at all. I think my favorite thing about it is that it can be a stereo unit or you can run dual mono channels and you can compress two different signals at the same time and have two different parameters for each one of those signals. So it's really flexible. It certainly has a sound. I don't really know how to describe it, but it's almost like 90s vintage. I mean, I guess it kind of depends on how you use it, but it's got this weird grit to it that um, sort of bites and I don't know, it's like mid forward. It is a tube compressor. So even when you don't use the compressor at all and you just run everything through the unit, it definitely has an interesting sound to it. One thing that I also really like about it is just that it's a physical unit, right? So <laughs> it's just nice to have an actual hardware unit to physically interact with. So I don't know what it is, but something about moving actual knobs on an actual piece of equipment really kind of makes you, I guess, listen more. And it's helped me really understand more what compression does. It's 350 bucks. So if you're looking for an entry thing to get into compression with and you're tired of using plugins, I would say that this unit is well worth the price. So that's the five pieces of gear under 500 bucks that I use in my home studio to make myself more efficient and more creative. Um, I hope you like this and I will see you in the next one.